Okay, then we should start. And uh, today I will first go through the solution for assignment number three, uh, the evaluation uh, results and also some comments to your solutions were sent out on, uh, on Sunday. Uh, and I also uploaded the solution file on, uh, on Fronter, uh, but I will go quite fast through the different problems before we continue on the last part of the curriculum, uh, which is described in chapter 8 in the textbook regarding operations uh, scheduling. Also, those of you who delivered the paper copy on the assignment can uh, have it back here, or eventually you can come to my office to, to get it back. Uh, and I have also some of the uh, old assignments, which is uh, still not uh, received from those who delivered it. So if you want them back, you can uh, either fetch them on the lecture or come to my office. So let's now look at uh, assignment uh, number three. First part regarding the EOQ formula, economic order quantity. Uh, also, uh, what I have tried to emphasize that you should uh, always read the text thorough, try to get as the, the information you need from the description, uh, because here in the first section you will have the values of the variables which you need to use in uh, uh, for answer the, the questions. And let's now go pass through the solution file, which is uh, here. Uh, and here I have also tried to just show the different uh, variable values, which is uh, given in, in the text here. Uh, you are uh, given that uh, you have, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 3,000 brackets per year, which also can be converted to a certain uh, uh, number per day by dividing by the number of working days, which is 250 here. Uh, the ordering cost is uh, given to be 18.75. The interest rate, in this case, you have several parts of the interest rate. The main part is the cost of capital, which is here given as 18%. But to have uh, to, to show uh, or to uh, to calculate the exact value of the interest rate, you also need to include the cost of storage and handling, which is here said to be 4%, and also insurance of 3%. So in total, you have 18 point, uh, plus 4 plus 3, which is 25% as the interest rate. This is given as the annual interest rate. Uh, but uh, you can also here divide by the number of working days to get the interest rate given in the uh, fraction per day. So to find the EOQ value, the optimal order quantity, use the EOQ formula. Should be quite familiar here. 2 multiplied by the ordering cost multiplied by the demand divided by the holding cost. And the holding cost is the product of the interest rate and the value of the uh, of the item. Uh, what is important here that you use the same measures, same time measures. So if you have the annual demand, you should use 3000 and divide by the annual holding cost, 1.25. Eventually, you can use the daily demand, which here is found to be 250. Uh, no, no uh, of course not. It's, uh, the, uh, the daily demand is said to be 12. 3,000 divided by 250 days is 12. But if you use the daily demand here, you also need to use the daily holding cost shown here. Uh, independent of which formula you use or which, which time measures you will use, if you are using the same on the nominator and the denominator, you will find that the optimal order size will be 300. Then, on problem B, find first cycle time. Cycle time is given as the order size divided by the annual demand. And here you can either use 300 divided by, divided by 12 and get 25 days, or you can divide by uh, 3000 which is the annual demand and gets 0.1 year. Both answers are equally uh, correct. 
uh, to find the average inventory level, divide the order size by 2, which gives 150. This is a situation where you have a constant or fixed demand, and then the average inventory level will be the half of the ordering size. The annual inventory cost <coughs> can be used by multiplying the average inventory level to the hauling cost. And then you will get 187.50. And as you can see, looking at the annual ordering cost, you can find the number of orders given, uh, given as the demand divided by the order size multiplied by the k-value, the ordering cost, and you will also get 187.50. So, on problem C, assume that you have a lead time of 10 days before delivery. What is the reorder point? And then the reorder point will be the demand in 10 days. We have already found that the demand per day is 12, so then it should be quite easy to multiply the number of days by by the daily demand to get 120 items. Eventually use an annual demand of 3000 and multiplied by 10 days divided by the total of 250 working days. You will get the same answer. Then you will get some new information there. Company are able to produce the brackets themselves. Now you have a rate of 60 per day. You have a fixed cost of setting setup for production, which also is, well, which here is said to be $60. Uh, that means that in the new formula, you need to use this setup co cost and not the setup cost for uh, ordering, which is given earlier. Um, also, assume that the variable cost of production is equal to the price when buying from an external supplier. So now find out the optimal size of the production run for the brackets. And then let's try to look at the values or find the values for the different variables here. The holding cost still 125. Now the K value is 60 because this is production, set up for production and not ordering for another, uh, from another vendor. You have the production rate which is given as 60 per day. And then you can find out that by multiplying by the number of working days, you should be able to produce uh, at a rate of 15,000 per year, if you are utilizing the production capacity at maximum. But of course, you don't need 15,000 per year. So now you should use this one as a rate and find out when you should produce and when you should uh, uh, just consume. Because here you will not have the traditional EOQ or deterministic EOQ situation, but rather you will have a situation where you have production rate uh, and you will also have consumption in, in the production period. And then you will have a long period with only consumption. So here you will find out the total cycle time, which is between two setup uh, of, of uh, two setups for, for production, but you also have the T1, which is the uptime, and the T2, which is the downtime period. Here, to use the EOQ formula adjusted for production, you need to calculate the H mark, which be, will be the hauling cost per item, but multiplied by the fraction you get when you take 1 minus the demand rate divided by the production rate. 1 minus 3000 divided by 15000. And then you will find that uh, this holding or the adjusted holding cost will be 1. So when dividing by 1 in this EOQ formula instead of 125, which you used when you had the first ordering situation, you will find that the optimal size of the production in this case will be 600. 
also of course use the new k value the k value for setup and not the ordering cost which is given in the first part of this problem so here produce 600 and you have a production rate of 15,000 per year when you have produced 600 you reach this point and then you have a long period of no production, only consumption, before you start a new cycle with producing 600 new items. And then you are asked about the proportion of each production cycle, which is the uptime, and what proportion is the downtime. The cycle time can be found here, ordering size, uh, the, the order size or the production batch size divided by the, the annual demand or the demand which here is 12 per day so 600 divided by 12 is 50 days so the total time for one cycle between two production starts will be 50 days the uptime period the period of producing will be the Q value the batch size divided by the production rate 600 divided by 60 which is 10 days which is also 20 percent of the cycle so here 10 days of production and the remaining of the cycle the remaining 40 days will be the t2 period here the down time where you have only consumption and not production so on F, what is the average annual setup and hauling cost attributed to this item? Would you recommend the company to produce the brackets themselves? And here I have used this simple formula. You can also use the TRC formula, uh, which is split into ordering and hauling cost. Uh, you will get the same result. The sum or the total setup and holding cost can be given as the square root of 2 multiplied by the setup cost multiplied by the annual demand and the adjusted holding cost, the H mark, which is 2 times 60 times 3000 times 1, which is 600. So here we will get a total setup and holding cost in the production situation of 600. But if we remember the answer on question B when you are ordering from an external vendor you will have 187.50 in holding cost and 187.50 in ordering cost and the sum of this will be much smaller than 600 it will be 375 so here in this case the recommendation is not to produce yourself because it will be more costly to produce yourself 600 compared to 375 uh, when you are ordering so we are given some more information about discounts first we have the all unit discount here the external supplier wants to deliver in larger batches offers an all unit discount when buying a larger quantity so if the order size is 400 or more the price is reduced to 450 and if the order size is 500 or more the price is reduced to 4 per item and this in problem G is given for all the items in the order uh, order so this is a all unit discount if you reach a breakpoint you will have the discount for all units in the full order so then we first need to find the optimal order size with the different prices we have already found the price of five which is similar to problem a in this uh, problem number uh, 1a and then the optimal order size q will be 300 if the price were reduced to the second alternative 4.50 use the EOQ formula with the new price and you will get an optimal order size of 316 but since this value is lower than the breakpoint 400 you need 
to increase the size to 400 to get this discount. So here you have one potential alternative for the optimal policy, order 300 items with a price of five, no discounts, or the smallest possible order size, which will give you the first discount, and this is 400 items at a price of 450. And at the third alternative, if the price were four per item, you would have an optimal order size of 335, but this number is also, in this case, smaller than the, um, than the break point. The break point here is 500. That means that to get the price of four per item, you need to order 500 items. So now, check the cost for the three potential optimal alternatives, either 300, or the first breakpoint of 400, or the second breakpoint at 500. And then we can compare the different costs here. Use the cost function. Now we need to include the purchase cost, the cost of the annual demand, because the C or the, the, the values of the items will be different with the different uh, costs, which now is, uh, the price will be different according to the size of the order. So now the purchase cost is a part of the relevant cost, needs to be included, and still we have the holding cost, no, the, the ordering cost, cost of ordering, which is number of orders, lambda divided by Q, multiplied by the K, the cost for placing one order, and in addition, the holding cost. And the holding cost needs to be calculated with the current price for the three different alternatives. And then you can see, with 300 without a discount, you will have a total cost of 15,375. With 400, the first discount, which will give you a price of 4.5, you will have a total cost of 13,865. And ordering 500, get the price of 4 per unit, you will have a total cost of 12,362.50. So this is the optimal policy with this discount, this all unit discount. Order 500 items every time, and then you will have a reduced price, 4 per item. And then let's look at the other type of discount, which we have discussed in this course, the incremental quantity discount. What would be the optimal order size if the discount was only given for the units in excess of the limits? Then you have another, another type of discount. You have to pay the same for the first 400 items. So. In an order, you will have to pay five for the first 400 items. Then you will have a lower price for those items between 400 and 500 in one order. So here, if you are ordering between four and 500, you pay five for the first 400 and 450 for those in excess of 400. And if you're ordering more than 500, the price will be 5 for the first 400, 4.5 for the next 100, the difference between 5 and 400, and only 4 for those in excess of 500. So here we can just simplify these expressions here. 5q will, of course, be the same. 5 times 400 plus 4.5q minus 4.5 multiplied by 400 will give us 200 plus 4.5q. And the third expression here, simplified, will be 450 plus 4 multiplied by q. So now we have the cost function for the three different alternatives. And then we need to find a new expression for the unit price. 
and the unit price will be the cost divided by number of units, which is pretty easy in the first situation. The cost per unit will be 5, no discounts. The cost per unit in the second alternative here will be 4.5 plus 200 divided by Q. This expression divided by Q. And in the third alternative, the unit cost will be 4 plus 450 divided by Q. This expression divided by Q. And now we have the price per unit and we can find the cost by uh, just uh, putting in the expression for the unit cost instead of one particular value as we have seen earlier. First alternative will be the same as we have seen earlier because here the unit cost will be 5. And like in the previous uh, problem, you will find a total cost of an order of 300 without discounts of 15,375. Then, with a unit price as expressed for an order size between 400 and 500, you will have the cost function shown here. The purchase cost will be the number of units per year, the annual demand, multiplied by this expression here, which is the unit cost. The ordering cost is independent of the unit cost, so this will be the same. And then the holding cost will be the average size of the stock, multiplied by the interest rate, and multiplied by the expression for the unit cost. And now we need to simplify this expression. Like this, the demand is 3000, the K and the lambda is 1875 and 3000. Remember, 1875 is the ordering cost from an external vendor, so here you should go back to that value, which is defined in the first part of the problem. You should not use 60, which was the setup cost when you were producing, because this is the ordering cost from an external vendor. Uh, Q is still not decided, so this is the variable. And the last part here, 0 0.25 is the interest rate, and multiplied by the expression shown here. And then you will again simplify the cost function and get what is here. 0 0.5625 multiplied by Q, plus 65 no, 656,250 divided by Q, plus 13,525. This is the simplified version of the cost function, the same as this one. And then to find the optimal size of the order, just like we did when we uh, derived and found the EOQ formula, derive the cost function with respect to the variable Q and you will get the derived cost function as 0 0.5625 Q to the power of 1 derived will of course be 1 minus, since the variable here is in the denominator 656,250 divided by Q to the power of 2 and the constant will be 0 when derived. Putting the derived formula to 0, uh, solve it with respect to Q, and you will get an order size, which is 1080. But here, 1080 is outside of the scope for this uh, It's outside of the scope for this price because here this cost function and this unit price is only valid for the, the, an order size between 4 and 500. So then we can just, uh, since we have now found that the optimal order size here should be 1080, we can just discard that one because this can never be the optimal solution. If you're ordering 1080, of course, 
you will use the last cost function here, which will give you a discount for those in excess of 500, instead of using the cost function here, which is found uh, where this is the optimal uh, solution. So we found that the Q value here is outside of the scope, then we just quit. We don't have to calculate the costs because this can never be the optimal solution. But for the third alternative, you have a new unit price, the expression for the unit price here, put that expression into the cost function, 4 plus 450 divided by Q, multiplied by the annual demand, multiplied by the average size of the stock and the interest rate, and add the ordering costs, you will get the simplified cost function shown here, 0.5Q plus 1,406,250 divided by Q and plus 12,056.25. Deriving this cost function gives us the expression here, 0 0.5 minus 1,406,250 divided by the square of Q. Set the derived function to zero and solve with respect to Q. And now the optimal order size in this case is 1,677. And this is valid because this cost function is used for all possible order sizes larger than the breakpoint of 500. So this one is valid and then we need to calculate the cost here. And then, of course, we can use the cost function here. We don't need to go through the extended cost function here because the, you, will, you will get the, the same result. This is the simplified version of this one. And we will find that the cost here is 13,733.30. To conclude, we need to compare this value with the value we found here which is the value without any discount, 15,375. And then we can see that rather than buying 300 items without a discount, we should buy 1,677 with a discount. But this is a very high order size compared to the other uh, alternatives. And if we look at the problem G, we find that if these were the options, we should of course use the first option, buying 500 items with a all unit discount, and we will get the cost shown here. Okay, that's problem one. And then, continue. Problem one regarding uh, deterministic or fixed demand uh, inventory uh, models. Now we will continue with inventory control subject to uncertain or so-called stochastic demand. And first, a theoretical question. Describe the two models, the new spy model and the QR or lot size reorder point model. Describe them, point out the differences and in which situations they should be used. Uh, well, very short description here. Uh, what is important in this theoretical question, try to get to the point to show very short that you understand the difference between the models and also, of course, in which situations they should be used. Newsboy model, one period, one single product, and you have to decide before the single uh, period how many items you should order, because you cannot store them to the next period. And of course, a typical uh, product is a newspaper, which is, well, will have no value for the, uh, for the coming days. You have to sell the newspaper for the same day uh, as it is um, uh, published. Uh, the QR models will be a bit different, because here you can store products, the product doesn't uh, 
well, lose its value if you're storing it for uh, at least for, uh, for a, uh, a given uh, period. And then you should aim to find the optimal combination of the order quantity Q and the reorder point R. Because here you don't need to <coughs> order every period, but you can place a larger order and store products for the coming periods, just like we have seen in the deterministic uh, models. So here we have two different decisions. One is the order size Q and the other one is the reorder point R. This is different from the, uh, from the deterministic models because here the reorder point will be very easy to find since you have a constant demand even if you have a lead time time between the order size, uh, b between the order is placed and the order is received, it is very easy to calculate the demand in the lead time and find the reorder point according to that. But now you don't know exactly the demand. The demand will vary. Sometimes it, you will have a high demand, sometimes a, a low demand, and you need to decide and find a way to decide about the value of the reorder point, which will reduce the total cost. And then we also need to include the cost of keeping a safety stock, which will prevent for a potential stockout. But sometimes you even will have a stockout and that will also be costly. One other difference is the probability models where here the newsboy model takes the distribution of the probability as the input and the QR models will use the probability distribution for demand in the lead time. So here we will operate with different types of uncertain input. Let's first look at the newsboy problem or uh, newsboy type of problem. Here we have a specialized monthly magazine and this can also be seen even if you have several days, you have a well-defined month. So you will have one issue of the magazine one month and a new issue the next month. And then, well, the magazine might not have a very high value in the next month, so people will usually buy the, uh, the newest issue, but you still have there might be some, some interesting, uh, uh, well, uh, compared to, to the newspaper, there could be some interesting articles even in old magazines, which will give it a small value. So here you actually have the purchase price for the magazine from this, well, what, where, what this book and paper store uh, pays to the publisher. Uh, you have the sales price, which is here given to be eight, what the customer gives you or the store for, for this magazine. And you also have an agreement with a second-hand store that will buy the unsold magazines for one dollar each. So you do not lose all the three dollars, but you will only lose the difference between the purchase price and what we call the salvage value. So the way to find the optimal order size here is to calculate the overage cost, cost of overestimating the market. If you are buying more items or more uh, um, of this magazine than you actually are able to sell, you will lose the difference between the purchase price and the salvage value. You will lose $2 for each magazine which is not sold. Uh, you also will calculate the underage cost, the cost of underestimating the market. This is the loss of profit. If you are not able to meet a demand, if you have sold all the magazines and a new customer comes and try to buy it. It will mean that you will lose the difference between the sales price and the purchase price, the loss of profit, which in this case is five and the overage uh, cost is two. So to decide about the order size, we have to calculate what we call the critical ratio. Critical ratio is the underage cost divided by the sum of the overage and the underage cost. Five 
divided by 2 plus 5, which will be 0 0.71. This is the critical ratio. The critical ratio will give us the percentage which we should try to meet the demand. This means that in 71% of the situations we should try to meet the demand for this uh, magazine. And then we here are given a discrete probability function which is said to be 5% probability for each of the possible outcomes. You have one customer who always will buy it and you have a total of 20 customers who can buy it. Sometimes, uh, well, so all of them will buy and you have a similar, the same probability for all possible outcomes here. So here we have two different ways on these types of news buy problem, two different uh, probability functions. One is this discrete probability where you have a given probability for each possible outcome but also we have seen examples where the demand is normal distributed which means that you don't have exact probability given here but you have rather a normal distribution curve looking like this that you have the expected value at this time and you have as um, uh, you have a given probability for all deviations from the exact or, or the expected uh, demand for, for this product. But in this case, we should use the discrete probability, which is given here, 5% probability for each possible outcome from 1 to 20. With a critical ratio of 71, look at the cumulative probability, which means the probability of meeting the demand if you have the given number of items on stock. So if you have 10 items on stock, if you decide to buy 10 of this magazine, you will meet the demand in 50% of the situations. All the possible outcomes from 1 up to 10, but you will have a stock out for the outcomes of 11 up to 20. And since we have a critical ratio of 71%, we should find the value in this table for the cumulative, uh, for the cumulative probability, which meets this critical ratio as good as possible. And 0.71, 71% will be somewhere between 70 and 75. Either buy 14 or 15 items every month. Um, to find out exactly which number, either 14 uh, or uh, 15, we need to calculate the potential or the expected profit. I have not shown models for this in this course. Uh, I have actually for as answers for this question, uh, both 14 and 15 is given a correct answer. But it's not necessary that the closest value, 70%, is the optimal value, because this is not symmetric. Uh, so if we look more into the details of the expected profit, we will actually find that buying 15 will give us a slightly higher profit than buying 14. But as mentioned in this assignment, both these answers as, are, are considered as, uh, as correct. I will show, we take a short break now, 15 minutes, and then uh, I will show how you can calculate the expected profit for these two uh, values. So, short break and then continue in 15 minutes.